In my previous video in this series devoted to the chromatic accordion, I showed the note locations on the Seagriff chromatic system, the one that I play. It's the one I'm holding right now. If you live in the United States, and if you are considering learning the chromatic button accordion, and especially if your intention is to learn it on your own from lesson or method books without the aid of a teacher, then Seagriff is the one that we at Roxy's recommend. Of course, all models of Roland chromatic V accordion can be easily configured to any of several possible chromatic systems. Still, Seagriff is the one that Roland configured my instrument by default, which means that this is what they expected me to most likely want to play. And they were right. But many people have good reason to prefer another popular chromatic system called Bigriff, also called Russian Bayan. So you might be wondering, what is the fundamental difference between the Seagriff and Bigriff chromatic systems? And is one better than the other? I will address those two questions in this video. Here is my FR1XB reconfigured as a B-Griff system instrument. You can't do that on an acoustic instrument like my Weltmeister over there. On the Roland, it is easily reconfigured by specifying a different value for one of its internal parameters and then relocating the white and black buttons according to a chart in the owner's manual. I required three new white buttons, which Roland supplied as extras when I purchased my instrument new. And I had three black buttons left over. Do you notice that the patterns of the white buttons on the B-Griff are slanted differently? However, although in the B-Griff system the notes are in different locations compared to C-Griff, their placement is based on the very same underlying principle. That is, the notes are arranged in increasing order of pitch amongst the three basic rows in adjacent diagonals from left to right or as you see me holding the instrument in a downward direction towards the floor. Low notes up at this end. And high notes down at this end. The difference in the B-Griff system is in the sequence that the notes are assigned to the various rows. On a B-Griff instrument, we go amongst the three basic rows in an opposite direction compared to C-Griff. We start on the third row, then go to the second, then the first. Let me be very clear about this. In the B-Griff system, to increase in pitch, we follow a diagonal that, as with the Seagriff system, leans towards the right, but this time in the opposite direction, from row 3 to row 1. And then we jump back to row 3 to start the next adjacent diagonal to the right. So whereas on the Seagriff, to increase in pitch, we move from the outside edge of the instrument towards the bellows, on the B-Griff system, we move from the third row away from the bellows towards the outside edge of the instrument. The result is that the B-Griff system is equivalent to the Seagriff system, but with the first and third rows interchanged. So in a way, the B-Griff system is like a mirror image of the C-Griff system. In the B-Griff system, the note C is located here in the third row. To get to the next note, I follow the diagonal that leans towards the right to this black button in the second row. It's C-sharp. The third chromatic note, D-natural, is assigned to the first row. At this point, I must go back to the third row and start on the next adjacent diagonal to the right with the note D-sharp. I continue in this manner, playing adjacent diagonals all the way up the keyboard. 
Are you getting the idea? Let me now play the very same chromatic scale from C to C that I did in my previous video on C griff, but this time on B griff. I will play using just the index finger so that the back of my hand does not hide my fingers. Thus you can see more clearly exactly what buttons I am pressing as I play. If you think it is odd for notes in the B-Griff system to increase in pitch from the third row in the direction of the first row, that is, by moving away from the bellows, then recall that that is exactly how buttons are organized in the Stradella bass system. You see, to go from the C major chord button to the C minor chord button, and then onward to C seventh, I move away from the bellows towards the outside edge of the instrument. Of course, compared to C griff, the natural notes in the B griff system end up in completely different relative locations, locations that you must learn in order to play the instrument. Now, I myself do not play B griff so I cannot act as an authority on the best fingering for playing the scale in the key of C, for example. Also, I have no lesson book to advise me. I'll have more to say about that soon. Still, I can easily, on my own, come up with a fingering strategy that, given a little practice, will seem perfectly natural. Obviously, because the note C is on the third row and the next note of the scale D is on the first, I cannot start with the thumb on C. That would be awkward to play. But I can start with the index finger on C and play it like this. You see? Not difficult at all. In fact, I wasn't expecting it to be difficult. After all, a lot of people in Russia play the B-Griff chromatic system, and I have never heard anyone complain that fingering for the scale or melodies in the key of C on that system is overly challenging. Incidentally, do you know how to quickly identify from sight a B-Griff instrument from a C-Griff instrument? You look for the row that has the three adjacent white buttons. On the B-Griff system, it's the first or outside row that has the three adjacent white buttons, as you see here. On the C griff instrument, the three adjacent white buttons are on the third row. See? Right here. Note, however, that this visual difference is not universally true. There does exist variations of the B griff and C griff, such that the three adjacent white buttons are on a different row. However, they are so rare that it is unlikely that you will ever see one. Also, some musicians have instruments that do not follow the convention of white buttons for the natural notes and black buttons for the sharps and flats. In that case, of course, you cannot tell. And finally, there are other chromatic systems, one of which is popular in Finland. On that system, the three adjacent white buttons appear on the second row. I've not presented the Finnish chromatic system in this video because it is so uncommon here in the U.S. To summarize the differences between C griff and B griff, on the C griff, the notes increase in pitch on each diagonal as I move from row 1 towards row 3, from the outside edge of the instrument towards the bellows. <laughs> On the B griff, the notes increase in pitch on each diagonal as I move from row 3 towards row 1, from the bellows towards the outside edge of the instrument. On the C griff system, the note C is located on the first row. 
hence the name Seagrave. On the Bgrave system, the note B is located on the first row. Hence the name Bgrave. Still, despite these differences, both Seagrave and Bgrave share some fundamental properties. For example, as a consequence of the way notes are allocated, they both share the same advantage that scales and melodies in different key signatures can be played using the very same fingerings. Let me be clear about this. Just as on C griff, on B griff, scales and melodies can be played in different key signatures using exactly the same fingering. To demonstrate, I will play again on a B griff instrument the scale in the key of C. And then, simply by moving the starting point one button to the right, I will play it again, this time in the key of E flat, using exactly the same fingering. Note that it was not even necessary for me to keep in mind to play the required three notes flat as the key of E flat requires. By using the very same fingering, my fingers automatically landed on the proper black buttons at the appropriate time. In light of this, we see that the B griff and C griff systems are more alike than they are different. Perhaps you will agree that it might be a bit of an exaggeration for me to keep referring to the C griff and B griff as different chromatic systems. Perhaps it would be more accurate for me to call them different styles of the same chromatic system. But the question many people have is whether or not one style of chromatic, either B griff or C griff, is actually better than the other. If you research this subject, you will discover that some people claim that B griff is better suited for playing Balkan or classical music, whereas C griff better suited for playing popular or folk music. Well, now that you know the real difference between the two most popular styles of chromatic, B griff and C griff, what do you think about such a claim? Is it really possible that the different note locations on C griff and B griff can actually translate into one style being better suited than the other for playing certain types or genres of music? Since I myself am not an advanced accordionist, I cannot honestly speak with authority on that question. However, when I look on YouTube, I see many accordionists playing all genres of music, some using C griff, some using B griff, many playing just as well and seemingly just as easily. For example, here is Michael Bridge playing a C griff chromatic which some claim is better suited for playing popular and folk music, but he's playing Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. And here is someone playing French musette music, which some claim the C griff is most suited for. But he's playing it on a B griff. <laughs> And 
clearly, here are a C griff and B griff playing together, the very same music. <laughs> These videos do not absolutely prove the point. They are only anecdotal examples. Perhaps you feel that a complete statistical study of the number of people playing various genres of music on each style chromatic, C griff or B griff, might settle the issue. But wouldn't such a study simply demonstrate the differences in popularity of various genres of music in the countries where each style of instrument is most popular. Do you get what I'm saying? If it is indeed true that more chromatic accordionists use B griff for playing Balkan and classical music, perhaps it has less to do with note locations on the instrument and more to do with the cultures, traditions, and musical preferences in the countries where that style of instrument is mostly played. Perhaps you are thinking that because the fingering of the natural note C to G on the C griff is more similar to playing those same notes on the piano, that that suggests that C griff is more suitable for playing popular music and hence B griff, which uses different fingering for those same notes, might be more suitable for playing classical music. I would be careful about using that kind of logic. Are you then implying that the piano keyboard is not well suited for playing classical music? Really? Now what would people like Mozart, Beethoven, or Chopin have to say about that? I agree that the location of the natural note C to G in the C griff system does make that system seem easier to learn for a piano accordionist wanting to convert to the chromatic, but only initially. It seems to me that once I've mastered playing all note locations on the complete keyboard, on whatever system I decide to learn, C griff or B griff, I'll be able to play any genre of music I want on it. So then, why do we at Roxy's recommend that if you are interested in learning the chromatic, that you should learn C griff? Good question, and in response we have a very good practical answer. It has to do with the availability of lesson material that you will need in order to learn the instrument. The fact is, the B griff system, although very popular within Russia, is not well documented in other countries. I've been searching for years for a lesson or method book written specifically for the B griff system, and I have not yet found a single one. Not a single one. If you know of one, Please let us at Roxy's know so we can suggest it to customers who want to learn the B-Griff system. Of course, there are probably many books that teach the B-Griff system within Russia, as there are books that teach the C-Griff system within France. But which of those languages are you more likely, with the aid of Google Translate, to understand? French or Russian? French, of course. At least with French they use the exact same alphabet as we do in English. Also, from which country are books most easily available? Amazon.com has an official site in France. Of course, it helps to understand a bit of French, but with a little effort, it is not very difficult to do a search at that site using the French spelling for the word accordion. From my browser's homepage, I enter into the address bar the word Amazon. And I'm at the American site. If I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I see a list of countries. I pick France. Presto, I'm at the French Amazon.com site. Now, to look for a book on the accordion, I must restrict my search to books, otherwise I will get a list of instruments. The French word 
for book is Livre. If I click on the Boutiques uh, button, I get a pull-down menu and I look for the word Livre. And I find Livre en Français. That's books in French. I now enter the French word for accordion. A-C-C-O-R-D-E-O-N. And look. There's Richard Galliano's book. There's Manu Mogain's book. And there are others. In fact, there are pages of them. If you have an account at the American Amazon.com site, you can purchase directly from the French site using the very same account. Or, once you have found the title of a book that you want, you can search for it at Sheet Music Plus, thus ordering it right here in America. But Amazon.com does not seem to have a site in Russia. Or at least I've not found one. So you see, in the end, our advice at Roxy's to learn the Seagriff system has nothing to do with Seagriff being better than Beagriff. Not at all. We view these as similar versions of the same basic instrument, the chromatic accordion. Our advice to learn Seagriff is based entirely on the availability of lesson material that you will need in order to learn to play the instrument. That's an important part of your decision to play any instrument. Piano, guitar, flute, clarinet, violin, or accordion. Of course, if you have an appropriate lesson or method book for learning the Beagriff system, or a family member or teacher who is able to teach you how to play it, or if you have the talent to play an instrument on your own by ear, then perhaps Beagriff is an appropriate choice of style of chromatic accordion for you to buy and learn. In my case, had there existed the same number of choices of books for the B-Griff system as there are for the C-Griff, books of equal quality to Mogain's, then in all likelihood I would have chosen to learn the B-Griff system. And in the end, I seriously doubt that my playing skill or ability to play different genres of music would be any different today. But since I could not find a single book to teach me B-Griff, yet several for Seagriff, then Seagriff is the style of instrument that I felt was right for me. Incidentally, I do know of one book for the Seagriff chromatic system for which there is an English language version. It's called the Anzagi book. I have it here. It's like the Galliano book in that it contains instruction for both piano and Seagriff chromatic accordion. Some people like it. However, as a lesson book, I find that this Anzagi book progresses too quickly for me. I prefer the Mogain book for its many progressive practice exercises, exercises that train my fingers to instinctively know the locations of notes, as well as fingering strategies for playing various ranges of notes. Some people call this muscle or motor memory. It's something that all musicians must accomplish regardless of what instrument they play, and it is only through repetitive practice that it is accomplished. Pretty well all music method books and music teachers will tell you that to build and maintain skill on any musical instrument, you should regularly play practice exercises. I must repeat that at Roxy's we do not feel that the chromatic accordion is better than the piano accordion. The fact is, it's the piano accordion, not the chromatic, that has evolved to be most popular in America. And that may be your main reason for deciding to play piano accordion. Personally, it is my observation that the style of accordion that a person is most likely to choose is the same as the language that they are most likely to speak. It depends mostly on where they were born and live. If you were born and raised in America, you most likely speak English, and if you become interested in playing accordion, you will most likely choose the piano accordion. If you were born in France, you speak French, 
and Seagriff Chromatic is the one that you will most likely choose. If you were born in Russia, you speak Russian, and Begriff Chromatic, or Bayan, is the one you are most likely to decide to learn and play. In short, your decision is based mostly on culture, and there is nothing wrong with that. But of course, there are always people who become curious about musical instruments played in other cultures, and wonder if a particular style has certain playing advantages. Like for example, the ability to use the very same fingering for playing melodies in different key signatures. Or having the keys closer together, making it possible to play over greater tonal ranges. If you are that kind of person, then maybe you would enjoy playing the chromatic. But no matter which style of accordion you end up choosing, piano or chromatic, in the end you should at least know that the common opinion that compared to the piano accordion, the chromatic is a complicated instrument that is difficult to learn and play, is a myth. Common sense should tell you that if it were difficult, then it would not have survived as a popular instrument in Western Europe and Russia. In the next video in this series, I will discuss some of the practical differences that may affect your choice of which instrument, piano accordion or chromatic button accordion, you'd like to learn and play. Stay tuned!